right. We're alive. What's up, guys? We got John Anthony Lifestyle, formerly known as J-Mulk, joining us. So, you know, we do these streams with John probably once every two months, obviously because John and I are friends, but also because I think there's a lot of value there and uh, people periodically have a lot of questions. So, uh, yeah, what we'll do is we'll just kind of bullshit for a little bit, then we'll answer all your questions. We're not going to go for too, too long. Uh, probably go for like an hour or so or something like that. Uh, but yeah, let's, I guess, start off with a brief introduction for anyone who's not familiar with you. I'm sure most people are anyway. Um, all right. So I, I basically <clears throat> came on the scene in like 2012. I started formal game in tw uh, 2009 uh, using mystery method. And I hit my first 100 girls in June 2012. And that's when I hit like the RST Nation um, discussion boards, which is where a lot of the pickup and seduction advice was taking place at that time. Um, kind of the unique angle I bring to the game is I have like a, a background with philosophy, computer science, cognitive science, psychology, um, systems engineering, et cetera. I used to work for Lockheed Martin for five years on ballistic missile defense, which might end up coming in handy. And with this given global conflict here, I was basically my job was to optimize speed of response time and accuracy of response against nuclear, biological, or chemical missile attacks. I worked primarily with the Navy ships. So basically, if there was like a, a ballistic missile, it fires an intercepting missile into outer space and has to hit it with enough force to destroy the warhead. Um, they call it kinetic kill vehicle. So basically, I, I brought all that information, my ability to hyperanalyze into the dating game um, currently at 1,474 girls. And I have this chart I always show where it was like an exponential progression. Put up the comment, uh, that fucking guy pays escorts for his videos. Let's address this right away. No, I right, can get into that. Okay, here you go. Okay, this is slander. This is a false statement of fact that was propagated by various people, including most prominently by Modern Life Dating. I currently have a lawsuit against Modern Life Dating in the United States and in Japan. He was served personally in both places. This is absolutely false. It's a rumor that gets kicked around. And anyone that puts this out there, okay, you don't have a platform, Galad. But if you want to go say that somewhere else publicly, this is slander. Okay, this is something that you can be sued over. And it's absolutely false. Okay. I have the most proof in the game by far. No one even comes close. I recorded hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of infield. I was recording with a five person camera crew for a full year, five nights a week. Okay. And during that project, either me or my old business partner pulled one of the nights or both of us would pull, but the times that neither of us pulled, uh, both of us would pull more often. So we kept the number of pulls across that project greater than the number of nights out. Okay. Dude, you know what I was thinking about the other day? I had a live stream on with a, with this black pill guy, and he basically accused me of uh, faking infield, right? Uh, he didn't directly say that, but that was an implication because he basically saw that in one of my infields there was a jump cut, and that's because, you know, battery dies when you film infield, right? You know that better than anyone. Uh, so, I, you know, I just had this idea on the spot. I was like, dude, like, uh, the implication is that I'm lying, so let's do this. I'm going to take a lie detector test. I'll we, we, never did, we never did battery switches during interactions, though. But what, if the, what if the battery the, died during the interaction, we would just lose the footage. So we would always, if the battery was ever getting low, they would go pause between interactions. Right, but the, so there would be there would be a jump cut, right? Because you had to pause, right? So you you couldn't get the infield. No, like not during an interact, not during a set itself. Oh, not during. Yeah, but like, what if you had like a long set, like a really long one? If it, I would I wouldn't run really long sets. Well, it, it could last for about an hour. We got these Japanese batteries. It would last like. Oh hour 30 hour 45 and i just couldn't run a set longer than that yeah i mean I, you know like i guess it was i guess like Wait, you, you know you know how much how, how much fucking work that was that's why it's super annoying when people pay this right but i'm just i'm just saying <laughs> it's not unreasonable that while you're filming a battery dies yeah that's like not something crazy so anyway yeah, so no, we lost tons of good footage like that yeah yeah like that's what i'm saying so anyway so the point i'm making is so the implication was that i was faking infield so i had this idea i was like dude I'm going to make you an offer. I'll take a lie detector test, right? And I'll pay for it. But uh, if I'm proven right, then you have to reimburse me for it and publicly admit that you were wrong. And he, he didn't want to take me up on that offer. But I'm saying that's like, if someone like you, sh you should do that too. Like when people publicly accuse you of shit, it'd be like, okay, I'll take a lie detector test of a facility of your choice. But when I'm proven right, you have to reimburse me and publicly admit I'm wrong. 
Because I, I think, I think, I think that's like the only way to get to the bottom of some of this shit uh, is like, because the people will never believe you, right? Or like, they're, Dude, they're, they're, they're no, they're here's the thing. If anyone's going to make that claim, show me one little ounce of proof, okay? Show me anything. Show me, nothing's ever been presented that actually proves that claim. Okay? Right. What was presented by Modern Life Dating was a fake screenshot that, that was first tried to be put to CoffeeZilla. I'll just give a really quick summary so we don't derail this, but I just like to address this because it's it's fucking annoying that that gets kicked around another one that gets kicked around is that i'm a rapist or that i've been convicted of rape no girl has ever accused me or charged me with rape I, i've never been charged by police never been accused by any girl not even once out of 1474 closes it's simply absolutely false objectively false it's not oh i don't i disagree with that no it's objectively false if anyone wants to throw that claim around they're slandering me okay yeah. but with with the oh he pays all the girls that was in that screenshot that they tried to put to CoffeeZilla and they tried to put to Modern Life Dating, someone took like some picture off one of my product websites. It was a picture of me in Vegas in 2013. And they're saying this is a recent conversation, like last year or like in the past couple of years, like after 2020. It's a picture from 2013. And they're, they're using that as my WhatsApp picture. Okay. In the in the fake screenshot first of all i've never had a girl in my whatsapp picture that would be uh, but that i can personally verify for i've never seen you actually do that I've, I've, yeah and for, and for yeah we've been friends for many years but for obvious reasons that would cock block me right yeah no, I and do. they were capitalizing all their sentences I've, i haven't done that in forever at least probably like six or seven years like i always write in all lowercase even in professional emails because yeah, that's, I took, not, that's actually true i never really i thought. took capitalization off my phone Plus, um, well, what is they the were saying, for just out of curiosity, like, why did you do that? Why did you remove capitalization from your phone? Um, I read a really good post back in the day that it's like lower investment. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I see that. Okay. To do yeah. like all lowercase abbreviations. That's interesting. You know, I didn't know there was else. a future on the phone that you could do that, like December. Yeah. December. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I think it's to my detriment with professional emails because, um, but I, but this, this oh, one really, really, so you can't capitalize. <laughs> This one really, really rich dude hit me up and he's like, hey, I've 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 run uh, lots of traffic to like Pandora's box and top badass and this and that. And he's like, I think you actually have a real product here and I want to like push traffic to that. And it was all in lowercase. And me and my business partner were like, uh, this looks skeptical. But he backed everything up. But he was typing all lowercase too. And I was like, aha. But anyways, like in that fake screenshot, um, besides the capitalization and the, and the what's that picture with the girl, uh, they're also claiming like some assistant of mine that, I, that I've never had on my team was telling them to order these escorts through my directive and like just all this nonsense. This is all false stuff. That would be like really expensive, like paying for escorts for clients. Like that would be like real expensive over time. Yeah, it's 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 ridiculous. I get guys extremely, extremely good results on the live program. So that was extremely ridiculous. But like um what was the what was the fucking main point here oh I'm yeah so talk about the Discord coffee thing. zilla called me up because he, he has my number because uh spencer cornelia um gave him my number and spencer was good friends or still is good friends no. with two of my main wings that i had in vegas in 2013 and they saw me pull all the time they saw me crush they told spencer that so spencer heard through firsthand and you saw me in live too no. um and basically um, CoffeeZilla was like, okay, well, these are pretty strong claims. Can you show me a screen recording showing that this is his phone number connected to this message thread so that I know it's not Photoshopped? And they're like, no, I can't. What a fucking surprise. And then he's like, why not? And they're like, oh, it was on a company phone. I've never had fucking company phones. It, it turns out that this was just my, my fucking ex-employee who was bitter because I fired him because he was poaching clients. And he just created all these narratives and this and that. And I would sue that fucker too, but he's like broke living at home. So that's anyways, the, that's, the, that's the problem. You can't really sue broke people. Yeah. So yeah, whatever. All that, all this bullshit about the, those videos got removed. He's facing over a million dollars in damages, modern life dating in, in two different countries. So yeah. That's, the only problem that's that's really out, he has a million dollars. <laughs> and like, like I said, none of these claims have any evidence. No one, no one's produced any, uh, you know, girls claiming that I've that I've raped them or or um, any kind of like objective court records of me being arrested over rape. And so that's all false too. even RSD used to say that, oh, he's a rapist. It's just a convenient way to discredit yeah, you know, yeah, what, yeah. what I've accomplished yeah, in my yeah. ability to teach. Yeah, Fresh and Fit does that with me being a hater. Uh, he's just a hater or a cloud chaser. 
uh okay yeah so okay anyway we kind of that's a much less extreme <laughs> version of a, a claim there yeah. a hater i'd rather be called a hater than than say it's like imagine someone called you a murderer and they're, and they're writing that all over online oh i don't want to work with that guy he's a murderer okay <laughs> show me show me how that's even remotely true okay i like to, i like to murder pussy <clears throat> uh yeah. Anyway, okay. So, uh, okay. So, what, what I want to ask you was, uh, have there been any, been any like uh, on a different topic, any new uh, like game uh, adaptations or evolvements that you've had in the last, I guess, since we last talked in the last three months? Like, because you're constantly evolving and shit. And uh, I know you and I chat about that privately from time to time. I want to see like what have, what has been like the last, I guess, half a year, some things that you innovated. Um. Let's see. Like the like for example, the lowercase thing is interesting. That's the first time we've ever discussed that. So that's like that's like a good example, even though that's not recent. Yeah. What? Why did you think I was typing out lowercase all this time? <laughs> I have no idea. I never even thought about it. Like I never like really dissected. Like you know, now that you're pointing it out, like uh, I realized it, but I never like thought about it. It's not like when you text me, I'm like all right, let me analyze John's text and see what exactly you know he means behind this message when he says sup. What does that really mean? Um, okay. So let me think here. I, I know like if I'm, t if I'm looking at like overall, like, cause, cause one of my, uh, one of my guys on my team was like, Hey, what were the biggest innovations you made over time? And I, and I was, I was starting to look back. If I look at the graph, like when, when things started to like hit like breakneck speed, it was dates straight to the house. So mm -hmm. guys need to, I think that's probably one of the biggest, biggest innovations and, and honing and optimized texting. So like my leads machine product or my a week program, like um, those basically like give you all the texts. I don't have my clients write any of their own texts. Um, it just takes you from a phone number to a date with all the optimized control paths. It takes you from a match to a phone number with all the optimized control paths. Um, so that date straight to the house was a huge one. Um, let's see. In the past, I think the, the most recent ones um the the uh i think i saw you yesterday over text it sounds kind of cheesy but it has like extremely high response rate i think i so <laughs> how does that work like well, how will be the context look at look at here put up the, can you put up those three comments from that guy vintage vintage specs it's like one of the last like eight yeah i mean i feel like we're getting a little off topic but okay yeah let's do <clears> that real quick and now let's get back yeah, but, but discussion. What, but the uh, where he's like as someone who can actually get girls, blah blah blah, and then the comments after that. Um, <clears throat> but the, I think I saw you yesterday. Basically, I I split tested a whole bunch of shit, and yeah, they said, I've been using. Uh, oops, what does it say? I've been using John's course three weeks. Already have too many numbers to manage. A handful of quality girls. I'm seeing. I yeah, I get those uh, things emailed all the fuck like every day multiple we're like tracking all of them we're, i'm gonna go over a big proof document soon where of all just massive results but i think i saw yesterday we had the highest response rate for reinitiation texts so well, how do you follow up from that well, like what um, if she says where like how do you so, follow yeah up? so like, i'll tell you like the origin example and, and how it panned out so like there was like this nine i matched in brazil on tinder I hit her with my standard opener. She ignored. I hit her with my standard follow-up. She ignored. I hit her with my standard second follow-up. She ignored. And I was like, what the fuck? And I was thinking, like, how do I get this chick to respond? What's going to pique her curiosity the most? Because I found that curiosity-provoking texts, and I'm sure you found that those have, like, some of the highest response rate. So I said, I think I saw you yesterday. And I think that makes them think, like, where did he see me? Was I wearing makeup? What was I doing? How did he recognize me? Why didn't he talk to me? It was this serendipity? Like, all this shit starts running through their head. She responded instantly and she's like, where? And I'm like, all right, I can't make this sound fake. So I was like, um, in Brazil. I was like, <laughs> well, I was like, I think I, I, I was like, I, I was like, you were downtown walking on the street, which is really generic. Right. Um, and sometimes, sometimes they're like, yeah, that could have been me. But she was like, no, like I wasn't downtown yesterday. Um, and I was like, oh, you must have a twin then. Ha 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 let's move to text uh it's, it's easier to plan something over there and she sent her number and then i took her out that day and banged it there's like objections to come home but i ended up banging and she got one on rotation and then i tested it i fired it out to a whole bunch of other girls who weren't responding and the response rate's super high 
Mm. And it can also be used as an opener. I had a guy on my, on my eight-week program that was tracking. <clears throat> he used it. He got like 12 numbers out of 12 attempts using it as an opener. Um, okay. So uh, so basically when the girl, if the girl says where, you would just give like a kind of a somewhat generic like, oh, downtown walking around the street. Like how do you? Yeah. Well, well where, everyone, where anyone goes a lot. Is it, is in, in your better. in your city, whatever. So it's depending on yeah, like city. some mall, like some mall, or like some yeah. shit like that. Okay. The the point is, you don't really give a fuck if like you're not like trying to find a place where they where they could have gone. It's more about, um, you know, it, there's a lot of people there. And, and I guess you if might, you want to be like all creepy about it, like if you're following her on Instagram, you could kind of check, and then you could you know, <laughs> you know like be get more accurate with it. Uh, but the whole the whole idea, like the whole idea is like. Um, but then you can get called out because, like, let's say, for example, she's pretending that she was somewhere cool, but she's just like she was actually at home. So she posts a story pretending to be somewhere cool. And you're like, oh, I saw you there. She's like, but I wasn't actually there. So it's like a double <laughs> lie at that point. No, I, students have shown me texts where the girl's like, like, I think I saw you yesterday. And then um, <laughs> and then uh, we still have Galad in the chat after we've already addressed this. I don't trust Anthony because he paid escorts for his videos. Again, zero evidence of that. And my name isn't Anthony, it's John. All right. <clears throat> Obviously, that kid's a retard. Um, there'll be this one student, they're like, oh, at that party, right? And he's like, yeah. And she's like, oh, yeah, like, like I thought you were really cute. And he's like, oh, well, yeah, we should meet up for a date. And they met up and he banged her. But that's, that's going to be rare. That's not the point of the script. It's supposed to be like, you mistook, you mis, you, she was mistaken for someone else that looks similar, basically. Um, but the whole power of the text is just all the curiosity it provokes. You, you know what's uh, actually, well, I think you came up with this a while ago, and uh, one of my mastermind members used this, and uh, it's interesting. So, you know, when a girl like completely ignores you or blocks you on her number, uh, you text her from a different number, right? From Google Voice. Uh, yeah. It actually had it work out. So, this chick blocked him texted her from a different number, pretending to be the guy's friend, said, Hey, my buddy was just curious uh, why you blocked him. Yeah. Right? Even I, I do this. I do this all the time. I have videos about this. <clears throat> it sounds super creepy on the surface. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, girl blocked you. Why are you still messier? Yeah. The whole idea <clears throat> is you're just trying to surface an objection. Let me tell a really quick story about that one, mm -hmm. just really fast. Mm -hmm. But there was this chick that uh, also I matched on Tinder in Brazil. Another nine. It's it's kind of common to match nines on Tinder in Brazil. <laughs> um, not common, but if your profile is good, you can. Um, so. Um, Basically, this chick was like a model. Like it said, like Modelo in her in her profile and all this shit. And we were talking on Tinder. I'm like, oh, what kind of stuff do you model? She's like, oh, I do like bikini stuff, like lingerie, this and that. And my current, uh, the penthouse I have now has a pretty good view. But the, but the last one was much higher up in the air. And we had like a view of the whole city. And I was like, look, here's the view I have. Um, we could take some pictures here. Like I have a pro camera. And she's like, yeah, cool. And so then... She was supposed to come over and then she like texts me and she's like, um, oh, my grandma's here. My grandma stopped by and like a surprise visit or whatever. And I'll keep you posted what time I can leave. And I was like, yeah, no problem. And then like a few hours later, I'm like, hey, what's what's the update? And she's like, oh, she's still here. I don't know what's going to happen. Blah, blah, blah. And I, I think I had like three or four days like packed with shit the next few days. And I wanted to like get her out that day before it went cold. And I'm like, well, can you just tell your grandma like, um, you have like a work thing to do and like you have to go to, and she got like offended <clears throat> and she's like oh blah 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 Your grandma's gonna die soon anyway forget about her <laughs> <laughs> but basically but basically she she thought i was insensitive and she blocked me mm -hmm. and so uh, i had a friend hit her up and you, you can do this with google voice too like in the states most people use whatsapp here so like i don't have like a second whatsapp number but you mm -hmm. can you can i have a friend hit them up same thing hey my friend was curious uh why you blocked him he was excited to meet you and all you're doing is just trying to surface the objection. Most of the game is just objection handling, uh -huh. right? Like there, there's object, there's 14 major objections I've identified to go home with you in cold approach over text. There's logistics, comfort, safety, hookup objections. Um, there's objections to go home with you from the date. There's objections uh, to hook up on the first date. There's objections to see you again sometimes. And you, but I know what they all are and I train everyone in advance that I teach. And so there's no curveballs ever. It's, you know, at once in a blue moon, there'll be like a, a rare objection, but it fits into the heuristic of, of one of the other responses. So, um, I have really bad diarrhea and I can't leave the toilet. Oh, fuck. John hasn't told me what to do in this case. Uh, <laughs> yeah, guys do message stuff. No, no, they're always like, the girl said this, what do I do? Um, 
and it's you know you want you want to hear about a, a recent innovation i had that i haven't actually shared with you yet or many people yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah just, let me just finish the very end of the story and yeah i love to, i always love hearing new innovation stuff um but basically she's like oh i didn't like this or that and he's like oh well he you know he was just excited blah well, well anyways he answers the objection or if you're doing it from google voice you answer the objection and then you just say hey can you unblock him and talk about it i'm blocked she unblocked smoothed it over and she ended up becoming a rotation girl for like six months and be, she moved eventually but like it turns out she had like tantric massage experience and so like every day we like we were hanging out every day but every time we hung out she was like doing like tantric massage shit i was like banging the shit out of her we were um it turns out she was like webcamming on the side and we were like filming like porno and shit together not for her webcam stuff but we were just like filming porn <laughs> using my like youtube setup and it was just an awesome rotation girl but like if i was like hey man i can't have anyone message her message her for that number because it's creepy all these like things you're not supposed to do like never double text i double text all the time i triple text whenever the fuck i want uh you should never buy a girl a drink okay you're gonna blow out like i have guys on boot camps they're about to pull and they're like at the bar with the girl and they're like uh, okay can't be the provider hey hey can you pay for these or can you can we split these blows it up okay good job right and and so on and so forth so um yeah but go ahead about your innovation all right listen to this so this is one i came up with quite recently so uh i took a picture right of like a shirtless photo because i've been getting in pretty good shape and then i was like hey why don't i take this one step further right so i watched some porn got a boner right and then it's like a bulge pick right but then i kind of waited for my boner to go down a little bit so it doesn't look like full on and then with the angles it looks just like my dick is huge in that picture right so some sneaky camera shit and then uh basically what i do is i'll ask the girl like hey how's your day going she'll be like oh good how about you i'll be like oh good just finished a big workout looking nice and fit for our day, which the text I've been using for a while. But usually they say, oh, show me, haha. And then I sent her that picture to show off my abs. But just so happens that in that picture, it looks like I have a humongous schlong. And almost always yeah. the response is like, oh, wow. Like, I didn't know you had a third leg and shit like yeah. that. And then the no, girl I, mean, I, I, I showed you, not not the actual dick pic, but I showed you the, the blocked out version. I've been doing something similar where there's like a Heineken bottle in the in the background. And my dick is like right up in the foreground and then it, it's like like the dick looks like this and the heineken bottles like on the table next to it looking like that so it, it, it looks like it, i'm already above average but it, look, it like exaggerates it even more um but yeah that works someone, really well because it gets the girls like super like uh turned on but but it's not like for example, if you just send a dick pic like straight up, that's going to be like way too tacky for a lot of chicks. And they're going to be like, oh, whatever. Like this guy has no class. Right. But in this situation, you're not actually sending a dick pic. You're sending a picture of yourself, which she asked for. So she can't get yeah. pissed at you for showing your dick. And it's not your fault that your big dick was just sticking out of your yeah. pants. Right. And so, yeah. no, I, you yeah. so you get all the I, pros of turning her on without any of the negatives of sending a dick pic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do like a baby step, step uh, dick pic sequence now too, where I, I have a good shirtless pic that they always love. They're always like, "Oh my god!" And then I'm like, I have a one that's more revealing, but I but don't worry, there's no dick, and it's basically like me before the there's shower. No like, dick. <laughs> I say it just like that, and I say like, "Haha." Um, and then I I'm like covering my dick, and it's like right before the shower, and then they really like that, and then I'm like, "Do you want to see the other part?" with like the eggplant emoji and they usually say yes and then i send that heineken bottle one and then you know that leads into sexting and stuff like that <laughs> dick pics are illegal in the uk someone said yeah there's no way that's true the world's getting the world's getting totally out of control oh, um but yeah i thought that was, i thought that was, uh, that's uh, that's like an interesting innovation uh, do you have anything else it's pretty good to go over this shit. <clears throat> um yeah but but a bunch of the stuff is is this stuff that i I tell the guy like there's stuff I keep off YouTube and like a lot I don't know if I don't know if you tell everything on YouTube but like there's a lot of stuff like the really like hardcore stuff I just like keep in the in the trainings which by the way I'm going to shout out um uh platinumdatingsystem.com if you guys go to platinumdatingsystem.com we have an eight week program you can sign up for a 30 minute call and we'll tell you how we can optimize your game for a lifetime permanently Drop like um, one more juicy nugget, if you don't mind, like just to give the guys some extra value. Like you don't have to reveal your whole thing, but just like one little thing that you think is good. Um, I have a, a really good ignore sequence because like they're going to ignore messages all the time. Like, first of all, let's dispel the myth that double texting is bad. 
Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think I've already done that. Like, done so many videos. I don't even bother with that. Like, yeah, I, I the argument is like, oh, bro, I still hear it all the time. I, guys, guys are always like, oh, but you can't do that because it's double texting. Like, even when I teach them, double texting is okay. They, they they'll show me these threads and oh, but she didn't respond and I stalled. I'm like, the girl's doing so much other shit. You, you know, it's things are gonna get in the way. You have to follow up. Like girls you know what I've noticed? Most of the really hot, the most of the hotter girls that I banged in the last several years, I've had to double and triple text. That's like yeah. the operation. Usually the ones where I don't have to are like sixes, six point fives, maybe a seven, but the eights and nines, I almost always have to double, triple, even sometimes quadruple text. Have you? Oh, I, I know what I know. I know what I can give. But, but yeah, what I was alluding to there is I have like a three text sequence, um, okay. which I never, I never have said publicly. That basically. Um, the odds are very high they'll respond to the first one. And that usually that that handles like 80%, maybe 80%, 90%. Then if they don't, it has uh, a follow-up one that again, like you don't want to just like, if a girl ignores your text, what I see a lot of guys do is they'll just like pretend it didn't happen. Or they'll start oh, using yeah, like that's, that's memes true. or something. Yeah, I, I you want to address it. Yeah, yeah, because otherwise it's like a big loss of value. Yeah, um, I, agree, I agree with you on that. Yeah, you can't just like change the topic. Yeah, yeah. I'll see guys like the girl, they'll ask, hey, hey, so when can you meet up? Blah, blah. And then like she'll ignore it. And, and then the next text will be then like writing a big paragraph. Like, yeah, because hey, they do hey, like, basically. Well, that's what you're doing. What? You're rewarding non compliance. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, one other really big one that I see a lot of people disagree with me on is, um, by the way, somebody said you got to raise the price of your eight-week program, John. We already raised it January 1st. We started YouTube ads on Wednesday. I don't know if anybody saw that. There's a lot of shit happening uh, with my channel behind the scenes. So um, you guys are going to be seeing YouTube ads and, and Facebook ads soon enough as well. Um, I want to talk to you about that privately offline because I've been having a real hard time with ads, Facebook ads, and shit because uh, of the content of my shit. But anyway, that's, that's off topic. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I just found out something about uh, how to make dating ads work on Facebook, like without problems. So, um, the, another big point of disagreement, I, I, I think like Corey Wayne is like one of the famous ones that disagrees with me here, but who gives a fuck? I mean, he, I don't think he's shown any receipts. He has half a million subs, but what does that mean? Um, and the guy looks like a huge pussy. Uh, but basically, uh, the, the notion of setting the next date before the end of the first, the end of the current date. I think that's incredibly critical for re mm -hmm. retention. I retain almost every single one of my girls if I want. And it's been like that for years. And there's a lot of key things that I'm doing to orchestrate that. But, and then I teach guys to do, they can replicate. But um, this notion of setting the next date before the end of the current date is huge because think of it this way. When you have the girl in person, she can't ignore you. Okay. Like she can on text. And also uh, the vibe is up. From the current hangout and also uh, you can respond to any kind of objections or logistical planning things in real time in person and then it's done out of the way so say you have a date on a monday hey cool so next time we should um we should get sushi or mexican what kind of food do you like oh yeah i like sushi okay and i go two days out let's plan for wednesday um we'll get sushi at like seven o'clock i always do a public uh food on the second date the first one is always drinks or coffee or usually more common straight to the house um, you can do the split bottle of wine or just hang out. Let's see how the chemistry is if you don't drink. And uh, I think it's critical to, to now set that next date because if you don't, if you're like, okay, cool, that was fun. Like, see you later, get home safe. And then the next day, now you're like, okay, I have to hope she responds to my opener. And now the vibe isn't where, you know, quite where it was before. And now you, you have to hope she responds to any kind of banter, to your hangout questions. You have to be able to deal with logistics and objection. And texting is like a battlefield in the sense that as soon as she ignores you once, you're digging out of a hole and you're in damage control mode for no reason. It's like, oh, am I ever going to see? As soon as she ignores you, now it's like in question if you're ever even going to see her again. Right. So, but like people like idiots like Corey Wayne, who obviously doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about just by taking a look at him for five seconds. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's insane. Like the guys that have channels that are popular, it's insane to me. Yeah, yeah, I agree. With you it, on that. Like, and I've had, I've had guys, you know, without throwing one of the bus, but like the guy with the biggest channel in our niche, with like about a million subscribers, he told me he hasn't hit a hundred girls yet. He's only ran like two girls in rotation max, 
ever. So he's like very lacking in experience. Um, but he's a nice guy. He's good at marketing. So um, what was the point? Oh, yeah. Corey Wayne is like, no, you want to like uh, let her come to you. All this let her come to you shit is a load of fucking garbage. It's, it sounds yeah, I, I, sort, I sort of agree with you on that. Yeah, it sounds it sounds great in theory. In theory like, yeah. There's even guys that are like, give your number and don't text her. Let her come to you. And that's all bullshit. Like, like I've ran the data and all that. Let her come to you stuff across multiple advanced friends, across multiple clients and tons of my own data. It's like five or ten ten percent. Yeah. Yeah, The problem is that girls are notoriously bad at taking initiative. That's the problem. So yeah, you're looking at about five. She might, even the girl's really interested. She might not take initiative. Yeah, and a lot of girls don't want to take the initiative. They believe the guy should take, especially more like old-fashioned girls. They believe the guy should take the initiative. So even if they really like you, they won't do it out of principle. So yep. it relies on the false assumption of like female nature that like that it relies on the assumption that women are like men and that like you know we'll take initiative if we're interested, right? But that's not even <laughs> even men don't really work that way. A lot of people just don't take initiative. Like even men don't. Yeah, work yeah, work. exactly. Yeah, exactly. So like, followers are good. Initiative. Yeah. Like, look at it like sales. Like, a lot of the game is like sales, right? If you like go, let's say, let's say you're knocking doors. Like, I did door to door sales for a summer. You knock the door, they're interested potentially in setting up an appointment, and you're like, all right, I'll hit you up later. If you if you go to try to set the appointment yeah. later over text or over the phone, the odds are significantly lower that you're going to set a sales appointment. The ideal scenario is that you or set if it you up. Or right to call you, right? If you give them your card and say, call me, and like, they oh yeah, call even you. even worse. Yeah, yeah well, far worse. And plus, in like lead erosion is a real thing, regardless of what fucking retard with whatever sub amount says otherwise, right? The more time that passes, the colder the lead is going until you've built up proper investment, right? Investment in the form of temporal investment, spending time together, uh, emotional investment with a girl liking you and getting attached to you, uh, physical investment with, with hooking up. In the very beginning, um, there's no investment. And all this, like, let her come to you, play it cool, let a bunch of days go by, have the date, let a bunch of days go by. Now you're dealing with a much lower probability of her ever seeing you again. Okay. But yeah. you've played it cool. And, and those kind of guys are just letting tons of girls fall through the cracks yeah, because yeah, yeah. they're retarded. Yeah, I agree. Let me ask you this question because this is a question I get asked from time to time. And I'm not a good person to answer this. Uh, but I think you're the right person to answer this. Uh, guys always ask, what do you do if you don't drink? I don't drink anymore. Yeah, so I quit. Yeah. yeah, I quit. I quit like two and a half years ago. Um, so I, I always do. Well, I, I don't even do many public dates anymore because I, I invite most of them straight to the house. So they won't yeah, so how do you do straight there. to the house dates without like wine, for example? That's my question. OK, so I say, is there anywhere we can? Can you you know how to make banners? Uh, yeah, I could. If you type it into a banner, I basically yeah. say I can type this to you on WhatsApp. You can put in a banner maybe. What is it? Yeah, just tell me. I'll type it in right now. Um, let's see. I say, um, I'd say we could relax and talk more at my new APT apartment, um, uh, and see how the chemistry is. Um, do you need me to call you an Uber? Which mark? So the typical sequence where you say we could split a bottle of wine. Uh, well, you say, do you like wine first? That tees up a yes. Okay which increases the odds of her complying on the future questions. And then you say, excuse me, do you prefer red or white? That's a sales decision close. She either picks red and she's coming over your house. She picks white or she's coming over your house or she gives an objection. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then the stats on that, by the way, in most Western nations like the U S Canada, Australia, UK, where most of my followers are, most people doing game art that, you know, that watch our channels. Um, I found like out of 10 girls, about half will agree to just pick red or white and come straight to the house. Mm. The other half will give an objection. They usually say, I prefer to meet in public first. I don't go to a stranger's house on the first date. Uh, it's either a safety or hookup objection, usually safety. Then I say, uh, the objection response is, um, uh, LOL, don't worry. I'm really laid, LOL, I'm really laid back. Don't worry. Uh, smiley face, bring pepper spray if you're that worried, LMAO. And I tested tons of shit, just like with the night game objections from pulling from the club. I texted on tons of shit, right? And basically, <clears throat> um, what I found was, so like out of the 10, five will agree to come straight to the house. 
the other five will get objections. When you give that pepper spray line, it'll convert another two or three out of the 10. Oh. So overall, about seven or eight out of 10 will come straight to the house. The other two or three will insist on public. And I found that those two or three that insist on public typically don't pull home anyways, or yeah. they come home and they don't close. Yeah. So it's also a sexual screen. But yeah, to get to the point of the, the non-alcohol one, you say we could relax and talk more and see how the chemistry is, smiley face. And I usually say beaut uh, um, beautiful view as well. We can relax, talk more in my new apartment, and see how the chemistry is, smiley face, beautiful view. Um, you know, that's optional. And then you say, do you need me to call you an Uber? So you're asking a question in the frame. It's not, does, do you want to come over? It's in, in, in and I, I customize that in Brazil. Like a lot of the chicks don't have cars. I have a car, but I don't want to go fucking pick them up. So I say, do you need me to call you an Uber? And the Ubers are cheap as fuck here anyways. I, do you need me to call you an Uber? And they either say, yes, I do. No, I have a car. I can drive myself, which is the equivalent of picking red or white. Or they say objection. Uh -huh. So um, it works. Uh, the conversion rates seem about equal. Dude, I, I, I thought of a really good addition to that. Without the line. It, yeah. In addition to what you say, in parentheses, put no objections, please. Well. <laughs> I, 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 and then she gives an objection. You're like, I said no objections. <laughs> no, I have clients. So, so you can, you can preempt objections too. So I have clients in, in like certain Eastern European countries. Like I lived in Ukraine and Poland mm -hmm. and in those countries saying, do you want to come straight to the house is tantamount to saying, do you want to come over and fuck? And so even if they do, there's like this social pressure that they have to say like, no. And they, they also tend to be offended. So instead, well, you know, in Ukraine, I, I just stopped asking straight to the house. I think only like a very limited amount agreed and one of them had lived in america for college so she was like culturally different um yeah talking about ukraine now i forgot about the situation here <laughs> in the world um well i'm pissed because i just invested a lot of money in crypto right before the whole thing happened <laughs> yep which was a kind yeah. of yeah yeah I mean, yeah i think there's a couple times i like did big crypto investments the same thing happened it fucking took a huge shit <laughs> um but so what was i gonna say basically um we were talking uh, yeah, I have the guys preempt it. So they say we could either do the split a bottle of wine or we could relax and talk more. And then, they, and then in parentheses, but don't worry, it's not for sex. Ha ha. Or don't worry, I have no sexual expectations. Ha ha. And then you're preempting it. I usually say that like after around 2017, like we recorded infield in New York City in 2017 for 30 days in, um, in like meatpacking and shit. And I pulled like 28 out of the 30 days. And I had my cameraman go through and analyze what I was doing. And I, because a lot of it's automatic to me now. And he's like, okay, you, you isolate. This is actually a really good thing just for a really quick overview of night game. Right. He's like, you're isolating in the first two to three minutes, meaning you're taking the girl away from her group, either to the bar itself or like to other parts of the venue away from the friends so they can't cop one. That then I'm, yeah, then I'm making like comments very openly about her body and her ass and her tits and this and that, but in a funny way. I'm making, I'm basically cranking up the sexual innuendos and sexual verbals. Um, and then I'm, I'm talking about how we should go hang out after. Um, but I say, don't worry, it's not for sex because most people, um, or most girls like are going to have that issue when you invite them to come back with you. And, and I was also getting to a makeout pretty much every time before I would pull. And that, that also goes against common opinion. Like, Oh, don't make out the girl in the club because you're going to build up her state and her horniness and then like you're gonna hit the point of no return and i used to subscribe to stuff like that back in the day but what i found is um the make out the open make out like explicitly disarms all the friends because they see and they're like oh like she actually likes him because otherwise they're not sure and they don't know if they need to save her mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so that gets rid of the friends and it like puts things pretty framed that you're gonna go bang but you still have to deal with the societal narrative of if you go with a guy that you just met then you're gonna be a slut and, you know, I might see you as a slut and you might see yourself as a slut. Your friends might see you as a slut. So then you just tell her, we're going to go hang out in my place, but it's not for sex. We're going to. So I say, don't worry, I have no sexual expectations. Let's go hang out and whatever happens, happens. I like I just like to let things unfold naturally. I say like all three of those in a combination. Right. And why don't you why don't you kick the troll? I always kick the troll up like guys literally come on the stream to just say, Oh, you're are you talking when you're pulling hookers and you're bad hookers in the course? Okay, we can I'm make not, I'm, not even, I'm not even reading the comments, I'm just focused on this conversation. Yeah, yeah. Just with all the comments. 
I'm lo- I'm looking through some of the some of the comments. It's just, it's just fucking. Well, let's, we'll take questions, but I actually want to ask one more follow up questions before we do take questions because I think a lot of guys are gonna be wondering this. Okay, so you've kind of addressed how you handle that over text, but what about if you don't drink back at the house? So right, like you get the girl back, and what I think most people do is you know they offer her a drink, they pour a drink. Like we, yeah, we. What so me and my chick, like we were at a it's carnival this week in Brazil. So like we we've, we've been fucking going to all kinds of parties and shit. Like I just woke up right before this live. It's it's six thirty here. But I slept to like 5.20 or something because we were out till like 7 a.m. But we, we were at this 5,000 person event um, where it was like a costume party. And I had, we counted the numbers. There was like 27 numbers that we got in this one event for a night time, for, for a night. And I think there was like seven makeouts or something like that. Uh, between My chick had like five and I had like two. Um, she was getting more compliant. She gets more compliance. She's a chick, this and that, but we're, we're gaming together. Um, and what was the fucking point of that? Well, I was asking, what do you do back in the house? Like, with, with, Oh yeah. 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 Like we, okay. So we still pull with, let's go have drinks. Okay. okay. But, or, or even if I'm out by myself, I still pull with, let's go have drinks. Okay. And I still have alcohol in my house, even though I don't drink, I mean, I chick drinks, not that often, but, um, I'll still have alcohol here. And when I get back, I'll, I'll either drink Heineken Zero, which is mm. a non-alcoholic beer, or they have like a Brazilian version that's like a, zero, a, a non-alcoholic beer as well. Or you can drink anything the fuck that you want besides alcohol. You can. So you, so you just basically offer her a drink, but then you just yourself have a non-alcoholic drink, basically. Right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Or or you, I can like sometimes I'll drink like a Red Bull. Sometimes I'll drink water. Sometimes I'll I'll drink a non-alcoholic beer. But like if you're like that concerned that she's gonna be worried that you're not drinking, you can pour a zero beer into a fucking cup and they don't know that it's a zero beer. But I usually just openly say, hey, I don't drink. And I turn it into a DHV. I say, I, I don't tell them I'm a dating coach, but I did DJ before I got into pickup and PUA. And so, and I'm using that as a demonstration of higher value in my sets. So I say, they know I'm a DJ. And I, and I still DJ events here and I'm looking to DJ in clubs in Brazil actually. Oh, thanks. I was talking yeah, that's, that's cool. That's what you're describing yeah, yeah, is, quite, yeah. is quite similar to. Uh, She's been like cleaning up after our place. dogs. We oh have, my god. We have like two more puppies. So what yeah. you're describing is quite similar to uh, what I do with kava. So like I usually don't. I I you know I'm not like I can drink, but I choose usually choose not to. So when I have a girl back, I'll just well, pour them a drink and just drink kava myself. And I'm like, oh, what are you drinking? I'll be like, oh, it's kava. I used to travel around Fiji a lot. That's where I learned about it. So it also becomes. I want to like I want to like squeeze her nipples, but I'm like trying not to oh. do. Stuff that upsets YouTube. Anymore. Please, please don't. Yeah, uh, <laughs> not live on YouTube. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, so, what was the other thing yeah. I want to discuss? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So we, we're kind of we're kind of just we're basically doing the same thing back in the house. Um, no, but yeah, like like most girls don't give. A, well, my point there was I, I say like, well, I was a DJ for 15 years, drinking every day. It's really like I was a pickup artist 15 years, drinking every day. And I said it. Um, you know, it oh, you fun. know what I was going to say to follow up? Well, I just said it wasn't good for health. I stopped drinking. But yeah, go ahead. I think for you, a potential next evolution could be actually telling girls you're a sex and dating coach. I've been doing that for like the last two years. It actually works really well because it makes them curious as well. So they're like, oh, no. like you don't say like you're a pickup artist instructor. You say you're a sex and dating coach. And they're like, oh. I, I tell, it's and selective. I, I tell some of them on the first date, but most of them I don't. And I and – I, I have to I have to disagree with that it's a good move just because I think there's a lot of negative uh, connotations. Whenever I do tell the girls the job, I say it's just like the movie Hitch, which isn't true because in the movie Hitch, all, they're all trying to find like true love. Oh, I, 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 from I ten years of coaching, like guys want to fuck hot chicks. And like yeah, like usually the, the the typical client, like out of all the thousands of clients, there's been like tens of thousands of clients now. It's like the, the typical guy basically just wants a whole bunch more options. He wants to like sleep with a bunch of girls and then eventually pick his favorite one and settle down that's usually what i've found so it's I, I think it's all about how you frame it so for example if you're like yeah you know uh you know i'm a pickup artist instructor or pickup artist like that that's a bad look right because most people associate negatives with the pickup community but if you say yeah i'm a sex and dating coach right which is what i've been doing yeah but then they think like you're trying to the problem is that then they then they're on like extra guard and they think like everything's like a line or a tactic Sometimes that does happen, uh, but on the flip side, they feel usually when I say that they feel a lot more open telling them, or they th- or they think you're a player. I, there's just like a bunch of negatives. I'm, I don't like them assuming that I that I'm a player. I don't like them assuming that because uh, I, I downplay like 
I, I, I think I talked about this in a lot of videos. I think you still but, know you're a player. Like, I think it's like, it's yeah, but, I, but it's not explicit in it. And it's not like implied either. So like they get the vibe. They're all, they're always not always, but they're like, I can tell you fuck a lot of chicks. They just feel that from the presence, the way I carry myself, but they're, um, you know, just, unlike Corey Wayne, but, <laughs> but basically <laughs> unlike most of the coaches in the space. Um, but I say like, say they're like oh when was your last uh tinder date or like are you going are you seeing a lot of girls from from D tinder do you meet a lot of girls do you go on a lot of dates no i'm very busy with work is always the response i, I have i have clients that'll be like yeah i was actually on a really nice date yesterday and, we, and i'm like what are you doing because you don't want to sound like a fuck boy or a player those things work against you contrary yeah. to popular belief but, but i think you can uh, even with if you say you're sex and dating coach you can avoid that so for example when girls say oh that means you must fuck chicks all bang chicks all the time be like do you think that's what people pay me money for i'm not a porn star people pay me to help them so i'm busy with work i'm not though actually though no one pays me to fuck girls right so you can reframe you want to you wanna bring <laughs> hold on you want to bring this qb little fucking loser on the stream i'm looking at some of his comments you, you want me to Shaking bring him my on? head? Come to my place. Don't worry, not for sex is cringe. Okay. In that example, I was talking about pulling 28 for 30 days. Can you do that? Have you banged uh 1500 girls? I doubt it. He's somewhat getting are you a passport. Talking, who are you talking about? QB? Who? QB passport flexing. Oh, that Sorry. guy, dude. Oh, uh, yeah. He was uh <laughs> he's a character. He was on uh there was a stream. I don't know if you saw it on Duke and Don's channel. And he basically just kept accusing Kevin of being gay. And his logic was, well, because you don't have a lot of photos of you with chicks, that must mean you're gay. And uh, basically, Kevin offered to like fly to like, okay, dude, we'll fly you out to a city of my choice. We'll link up. Why? Like the, the, the reason is why? Like, okay. hold on. Like time out. Okay. Like, like I've been, I've, I've like heard a million trolls, right, from being a coach for ten years, like being in the forums. It's everyone's like common uh response to just try to like disagree with you and troll you when you're demonstrating objective like world-class results they don't want to disagree with you or troll you okay i mean most most guys in the comments are asking like legitimate questions like no i know i know but but well i'm sure you've you've seen this a million times right yeah and, I, mean, I mean you and i have a little bit of a different philosophy like i just don't care about it like i just ignore it completely because it doesn't like it's like who yeah cares? well i mean like okay like, like this, price, this is the example the of a guy calling pay. kevin gay and then Kevin being like, I'll fly you out. It's more, it's better to just handle a guy like that as like block permanently so you can never comment on a video again. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I actually prefer, I, so you and I have different styles. I prefer challenging the trolls. Right. So what I always say is like, okay, come off okay. the live stream for the debate. So that's always been my style. Right. We have just, had but, but, but if the, but if the claims are nonsensical, like, like it's, it's so, obvious so that, Kevin back gay to, to, to accuse that is like pretty out there. Right, but that, what I'm saying is on that stream, QB is the one that winds up looking really bad, right? So it's not that Kevin is the one that loses value. It's like that that guy because his arguments have no merit, right? So it's very easy to challenge arguments that have no merit. Yeah, like like, so like Kevin the, was the like Kevin was like, hang on a second, you think I'm gay, but yet you're the one who has pictures of me shirtless on your phone, right? Like you know, like and then he just winds up looking bad. <laughs> so like, those things are pretty easy to like disprove. Why does the kid have pictures of Kevin shirtless on his phone? Well, that's that's a, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure because I guess he wants to prove that Kevin was gay. Anyway, let's let's uh, take some questions because there's a lot of actual questions that I want to get to. Uh, okay, wait, this one. How do you uh, suggest someone actually build a party lifestyle that can potentially enable night game abundance? Uh, where and what kind of friends should you make? And where can you find the right venues? So, what's your take on that? <laughs> you don't need to. You don't need to build a party lifestyle. Like, like all this idea of like social circle gain. That's all fucking nonsense and bullshit. Okay, like, no, like, I, I, I kind of agree with you on that. Fat Luke, like in the modern equivalent, Patrick Red, who's just like a little nerdier version of Fat Luke with these fucking Coke bottle glasses, and he's like, "Look, man, I'm in the jacuzzi," and like all this shit, so he can like charge you massive amounts. That, that's all fucking nonsense. You're not going to get laid a ton by trying to build a party lifestyle. Okay? Well, I, I, I think just to play devil's advocate, I think if you do it right, but I think 99.9% .9 of people won't be able to do it. Right? Exactly. Yeah, I'm not it's saying it's not like, possible. It doesn't yeah, apply. Like Gamble Gary and it obviously works, but like, yeah, unless you actually can pull it off, which most people yeah, I'm talking. Yeah, I'm talking about pragmatism. Yeah. All right, so um, – you want to find the biggest venues with the most capacity. Whenever I'm teaching, I've been to a shitload of cities around the world. Whenever I'm teaching a boot camp in a new city, or my coaches are teaching a boot camp in a new city, I type like clubs, whatever city. It puts a list. 
I have an assistant do this. And then, and then you can type the, the names and capacity in Google and it tells you the capacity usually. So the more girls, the more capacity, the better the venue mm, in general, I, Yeah, I in agree. general, right? Cause then it's more target rich. Basically you just have more selection to choose from. And more importantly, you can't blow it out by approaching, like say you go into a, a dive bar is another opposite end of the spectrum. And there's like two single girls in there and you talk to them. Now you have to switch venues or stand there like, you know, talking to your friends about game. Um, so, or reapproach four times a reapproach like RSD Alex says, it's also nonsense. Um, okay. So besides that, the other things that make the venue go down in utility would be, um, you want to look at like the dance floor, like, the dance floor area of the club, like the, the percentage of the club that's the dance floor. Like in Miami, like you have these huge clubs, like Story and like, you know, stuff like that live. And <clears throat> it's mostly dance floor. If you can't, if they can't hear your verbals or it's too packed and too crowded to even move and people are all trying to push past each other, that makes it suck for game, right? Yeah. So you need you need to be able, they, she needs to be able to hear you. Or, or so if it's like all tables, right? Yeah, the best venues are out like outdoor open open air, air, yeah, not yeah, being yeah, overpowered yeah, yeah. by the music. Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, no, we said the same thing. Open air venues, right? Big, huge open air venues. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Those are the best by far. That's where we were last night, and it's like a fucking game paradise. Yeah, yeah. When the music is not so loud, where you can talk. Uh, I want I want to comment. So, what kind of friends you should make? In my opinion, you should just make friends. Anyone who you like hanging out with, who you can have a good time with who's not like a negative Nancy or whatever. So if someone's like, ah, wah, wah, game doesn't work and shit like that, probably not a good person to go out with. Uh, so but what I look for is anyone who's like positive, energetic, uh, and it's just like someone who I enjoy being game around. Doesn't with, work. Yeah, but like I'm just saying, like if all your wings are- I love that argument. If all your wings are like black pillars who think game doesn't work, right? Like you're not, it's gonna be hard for you to like, you know, go out. Hold on, hold on, put up, somebody said, what do you think Hamza's lay count is? Can you put that one up? Uh, I don't know where it is. Where is it? It's the third, third to last. Pro project, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, quick note on Hamza. Okay. Um, be careful here. So, well, neither you or I actually know what his lay count is. So, we, there's no way we can answer. It's forty. But how, how, but how do you know? Did he say that? So, yeah, somebody said that he said that he admits that it's forty, just like Rolo admits that Rolo is at forty. Someone Ro said that Hamza, Hamza Ro admitted that, that he was at 40 lay count with low quality girls. He actually said that though. That's what multiple people have told me. No, oh. I can't confirm that. But he, okay, here, here's Hamza in a nutshell. I'm gonna make a lot more videos on this. Okay, Hamza is basically just putting out incorrect assertions, and then, and don't worry, I'm gonna be careful here. He, he's putting out incorrect assertions. And then he's backing them with this fictional Adonis character. Oh, okay? yeah. So you can just say, like, assertion, by the way, for those who don't know, is just things that are just posited without any evidence. So oh, it's, yeah. I believe this, 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 and that's because this fictional character I made up, who's supposed to represent the ideal man, thinks oh. that too. No, he doesn't think that. He's a fictional character, okay? Second of all, he straw man arguments the opposition by calling them a Jeffrey in putting up a very easy version of the opposition's yeah, argument that's to true. defeat. Yeah. A straw man is by saying, like, like he says, don't go to clubs. If you go to clubs, you're low value. All the girls there are low value, okay? Yeah, if you that go to clubs, true. it's just filled with drugs and this and that. No, you don't have to use drugs at clubs. And then he's like, but Jeffrey says you can get girls at clubs. And then when he makes fun of the Jeffrey, the opposing view, they do a pinch zoom on his, on the, on his face and he raises his voice. And he's like, oh, but I think the So he's already like, discrediting the guy by pinch zooming his face, raising his voice. And Jeffrey's always this like loser putting forth this opposing view to Adonis. Okay. And, and with a straw man argument, which is a weak shit version of the opposition. Right. Like he, he has the argument. If you use Tinder, you're a loser. You're a low. No, all, the only girls on Tinder are low quality. That's obviously false. There's tons of high quality girls on Tinder. No. Most people that you see in real life are also on Tinder. Okay. No. But he says it with that structure. Adonis would never use Tinder, right? Okay. Adonis is a made up character in your head. Okay. It, that's not a good argument. <laughs> All his arguments are just based on Adonis wouldn't do that. But 
and he's basically just he's just amplifying the power of his own assumptions by importing this fictional character yeah. that's that's every video i hate when people moralize or ethicalize dating where they're like well you know like you should like when they shame you it's like you, you should use tinder because that's for low quality losers right like i hate when people attach moral value to dating things like look either you like tinder or you don't like tinder either it works for you or it doesn't work for you but like this assertion that like somehow meeting yeah. girls well, what, what's, makes what's you a higher caliber man than meeting girls on Tinder is like nonsense. What's scary is he's like all casual sex is bad, Tinder's bad, clubs are bad, and like what he's and then guys take that as Bible. Like he's using the same techniques that religion did. They're like, here's the principles. God said so. Okay, no one can verify that. Angels came to you in a dream. Okay, again, no one can verify that. <laughs> and, I guess it's a field of angels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in terms of like in philosophy, like the, the study of epistemology, like how we know like things are true or not. When, when I can say any number of things have came to me in a dream from an angel, and no one can verify that. Okay, that's how the whole Mormon religion was predicated on on Joseph Smith finding a bunch of tablets that in God telling him stuff in dreams and like just writing stuff in the tablets. And it was really funny because someone was like, "Well, if this was divinely inspired, like let's recreate, like let's have you recreate it." And it was all like different. And, and he, like, uh, yeah, I'm familiar with that story. Yeah. All right, let's, 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 let's kind of. Uh, I, I agree. With you. <laughs> I agree with all the points you made. Anyway, so what country in Europe is best for Tinder now? Since Poland, Eastern Europe is probably ruined for the long term. <laughs> I would disagree with the assumption that Poland is like and Eastern Europe are completely ruined. Uh, I think, yeah, they. It's Poland is. No, Poland. I have a. I have a. What's your take off. on that? Yeah. I have an off-color joke. It's not. Nobody, please take offense to this. Yeah, our world is becoming so PC. I, I can't even fucking talk normally. I have to like review what I'm saying now. <coughs> um, <coughs> fuck. Okay. Um, and yeah, I guess you know. Fuck it. I I, I was very impoliti impolitically correct. I guess. And I, what, I what's the joke with YouTube, which is why I haven't posted in a week. But I, I will be resuming posting on Monday. Um, the joke is, I just saw a statistic that like uh, already like hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians are flooding into Poland, and like they're expecting like um, even maybe like a million Ukrainians are going to, go to Poland. So so the game in Poland is going to get a lot harder because the girls are going to be way more prude <laughs> into Warsaw. You think so? But do you think that maybe they'll adapt to Polish culture because no. Polish girls Polish girls are not that prude? No, I lived in Warsaw for a year and a half, and all the Ukrainian. It's like the only dates that wouldn't close in the first date with a decent chance were Ukrainian girl dates that were living in Poland. Mm. But okay, so so you think that now Poland is not going to be as good? That's your opinion? No, I don't. I don't think. I, I think when your game's good, any any city you happen to be in is terrific. It's, it's never the city that's the problem. But if, if you're like if you're looking at like equal level of game across all the different cities. Mm. I don't think anything's really going to change. With, with yeah, I think Eastern right. Europe is still going to be good. Like, I think, yeah, like when I was there like four years ago, it was like really good. Um, like, yeah, way better than the U.S. So I, I don't I think maybe, you know, these things change a little bit, but like I don't think it's going to be major. I think I think mm -hmm. Warsaw is still going to be good just because if you pick up companies are there, it doesn't like really blow it out. It's just because the cities are so big, it's just the scale. Like people often, th people. This kind of reminds me of the question people say: Well, what kind of opener should I use now that Hey Trouble has been burned? But in reality, Hey Trouble has not been burned because, like, I have eighty thousand subs, which may seem like a lot, but like Miami has like five million people, right? So it's just the scale is so different. Yeah. So even, yeah. even if there's like five pickup companies in one city, because Warsaw has like two, three million people, the scale. Yeah so big can you put on john, that comment from john mcgains it's up like seven or eight why did you see him on the okay i scroll all the way down all right we're going like weird order but all right let me take that order. oh yeah sorry i just want to address this one really quick <coughs> okay so as i said earlier in the broadcast here i sued uh modern life dating and this is by the way this is the only guy that i've sued in the manosphere so far <laughs> i'm not lawyer happy um, modern life as some as some have accused me to be modern life dating made like three two hour slander pieces against me meaning slander meaning false statement of fact okay I did not slander him I made videos saying facts about him okay things that are negative about a, about a person that are factual is not slander okay so if I actually had ever been arrested for rape and people were calling me like oh he's 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 been arrested for rape blah blah blah, blah. That's not slander anymore because then it's based on facts. Okay. But if they, if someone says John's a rapist, 
okay, which is what he was saying, then, and, and it turns out, okay, according to public record that I've never been arrested for rape and also no girls ever accused me. Okay. It's, it's, it's all in my favor. Like I have a giant lake count, 1,474 and no girls ever accused me of rape even once. Okay. So the fact that he's calling me that means it's slandered. And when he repeats that in a whole bunch of videos, and then other people are repeating what he's saying, that causes damages to my business. Okay. He, he made countless claims. He said, my girlfriend's a hooker. She's a civil engineer working on fucking bridge contracts. I showed her on the news and like all this stuff. He's saying, oh, his infield is all hooker. There's zero evidence of that. And it's also false. It's hundred percent false. Okay. Oh, his late counts all hooker. There's no evidence of that. And it's all false. Okay. So these people are free to say these things as much as they'd like. Okay. I can go on. I can go say, and again, this is just a uh, example here. I can say, uh, Alex here that I'm talking to is a murderer. He murdered all these people. And I could, and I could say that. In lots sure. of video, okay? And then, I, and then people could start to believe it. You, we could post it on all of our Reddit and all this stuff. It doesn't make it in the slightest bit true, but th that now starts affecting his reputation and, and his ability to coach. The the bad part about what Modern Life Dating did, the, the part that like really hurt my business, is when he's saying like, "Oh, I'm just hiring hookers for the clients." Okay, then our guys are like, "Oh, well, why why would I ever?" I have like as I said, the best results by far, like in terms of what I've been able to show that guys are getting on my programs and the results for myself. And to say that those are all fake because they're all hookers, then that start, I start to lose credibility as a coach. And it's all based on lies. Okay, so no, I did not make the same videos about him. My, the stuff I said about him was factual stuff. Okay, and the stuff that I say about all these other coaches is factual stuff. Okay, if it's my opinion, I don't make extreme claims about things that they've done. I say, I think that guy's a fucking loser. I think that guy's a fucking idiot. You can say that about people because you're not making a claim about fact that could be false. That's okay. the difference. Yeah, I see your point. Okay, let's uh, let's do like 20, 30 minutes of just like focus Q&A. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awkward questions. Uh, can you both talk about your experiences on TRT? What was it like before and after all the benefits that you've noticed? Do you want to go first and then I'll go after you? Sure, yeah. So that for those that don't know, that means testosterone replacement therapy. Um, we're not meant to live much, much past age 30, mm -hmm. uh, but bi bi uh, biologically as, as humans, um, evolution didn't really intend that to happen. And so testosterone starts to fall off a cliff. So I got on a few years ago, I'm 38 now, I got on it around age 35. And um, all it's doing, it's, it can actually in increase your longevity, you do it through an endocrinologist. So you get a testosterone test, and then um, you're putting it back into optimal levels, like where, where nature intended you to be, which gives you, you know, it, there's a whole host of benefits, we don't need to, need to go into this right now. But like what you um, noticed personally. Um I think just my voice got a little a little bit lower. Um uh -huh. I don't know. I maybe more energy. It's it's hard to know what's placebo and what's not. Maybe a little more energy, maybe I don't know. Cause because because there's so many confounding factors. Like I, I didn't start eating really good until recent, you know, recently and stuff like that. Um in terms, but it's supposed to give you like less body fat, like build muscle faster, um, have more like vitality, have more libido, like this and that. Um, but I don't know. It's it's hard to pinpoint because there's so many confounding variables. I would, I would say for me, for example, I did definitely notice my voice got deeper. Uh, my testosterone before I got on TRT was like 150 or something like that. It had crashed because of Lyme disease. So I was like super low. So I had this like baseline anxiety for no reason. And I noticed that when I got on TRT, this like baseline anxiety that I had in my stomach just kind of went away, which just made yeah. me calm and chill. My voice got deeper. I put on more muscle. Uh, but yeah, but it, the benefits are subtle. They're not, people think the benefits are like, you know, like, like, you know, you take ecstasy, right. And you feel like really good, right. It's not like that. It's very subtle and like just gradual. So it's like little things like that, that takes time to notice. But uh, yeah, so, but yeah, I, I just didn't do it for, you know, shits and giggles. I did it because my actual testosterone levels were super low, uh, you know, so the, the misconception is that like you just do TRT just because you feel like it. No, you do it because your actual testosterone is low. Like if you have naturally high testosterone, you wouldn't get on TRT unless you're trying to like, you know, bodybuilding, you're trying to go to like super physiological doses. Okay, let's take this question. What are the pros and cons of living in Latin America versus Eastern Europe? What are your favorite countries, Latin America and Eastern Europe? That's a good question. Um, 
Let's see. I think I think the girls are more prude in Eastern Europe. Like if I'm looking, like I lived in Poland about a year and a half. Um, I was in Ukraine for for some months. Um, I, I think the uh, the percentage of closing on the first date is is much higher in Latin America. I also there, there's definitely objectively a lot more curvy girls, which I prefer. I don't mean fat. I mean girls with bigger ass and tits. So I prefer that to like stick thin. Yeah, me too. Um, let's see. I think that I think the chicks are more uh, also like more sexually open. Like the, like there's more bi chicks overall. Um, there's like less taboos around sex. Um, it's not as like frowned upon to to you know go home with strangers and fuck strangers and this and that. Um, that doesn't that doesn't make it easy mode. Not far from that you know, like a Thailand or an Indonesia or something like that. I know lots of guys that come, come to Brazil and then they can't even get laid at all because you need like some baseline level of game. You need, you, you know, it's not like the girls are just ready to hop on your cock for no reason. <laughs> but um, I, Oh, I would, I don't know. Like, let's see. I, I think both of them share much better, like the, in terms of like external hotness compared to like U S Canada, UK, it's night and day different for both places and also in a, in a much better way in Eastern Europe and Latin America, I would never live again in the U S or Canada or the UK. I, I would never, it's after, after being exposed to like, not just, not just way hotter, but just much better internally. Like I have a video on Eastern versus Western women on my channel and like the girls are more feminine. They're more sweet. They're more elegant. There's less games. There's less bullshit. There's more respect. There's more of like the traditional male, female roles. I'm not, that's not meant to be a misogynistic comment, but as I said, more traditional male, female roles, like women embrace femininity, men embrace masculinity. It's not this like, you know, uh, like in the U S the girls try to be like very masculine. It's becoming more and more masculine. The men are becoming more and more feminine. And it's a lot, it's reversed in a lot of cases. I, I see a lot of these dudes in the U S or like, you know, the, ter the term like soy boy or whatever, like just these fucking like weak, you know, it looks like they could never win a fight kind of thing. Um, and, and the women are like these kind of like overbearing, like pit bull type characters in a lot of cases. Um, anyways, I, I think it's better we're, well, we're meant this this coming here on the screen. We're meant evolutionarily and biologically, and I, and I I know this for a fact from studying neuroscience extensively. I read like thirty neuroscience books. There's a part of our brain that's related to monogamy. A part of mammals' brains related to monogamy. Only five percent of mammals are monogamous, and there's over five thousand species in the in the mammal uh, fucking hierarchy. And humans do not have that part to be monogamous. It's definitive that we are not meant to be. Monogamous. There's a species of monkey that always only has one mate, and they tinkered with the part of the brain they found that's related to monogamy, and it started fucking everyone. And what they found through evolutionary and archaeological records is or evolutionary psychology, I should say. Um, we're meant to have one main partner and a bunch of side partners, and they also found that like one way monogamy is was was like the the much more prevalent thing. Meaning the man had a bunch of different partners. Like look at a monkey tribe. You have like the alpha leader. He fucks all the chicks. There's a bunch of beta followers. Sometimes the female monkeys <clears throat> will stray and try to fuck an alpha, alpha leader of another tribe. But it's like feast or famine, right? Like you have like you have like a certain amount of guys that are the alpha ones fucking all the chicks. And that's how it is in the modern day, too, I think. Um, not all the chicks, but like, you know, it's it's like feast or famine. A lot of cases like guys like us are, are fucking tons of chicks. Whereas the average guy that can't figure out game or carry himself well is going to have barely anything or just low quality trash, right? But do you think it's better to have a relationship with multiple women or just have a one sided open relationship with one girl? Like, what? Which one of those do you think is better? Um, relationship. Or you personally? Um, one sided open relationship is better. It, the 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 dynamics of a relationship with multiple women is just too, too dramatic. There's too much. You can't make everyone happy all at once. When you show mm -hmm. attention to this, everyone's like always jockeying for positioning. 
Um, mm-hmm. People are offended when you when you do romantic things or, or show more attention to one particular girl. Other people can feel scorned or can feel not appreciated. So you're always left with someone not feeling happy enough. Um, like when I had the, the other two girls living in the house with me and my main chick, it was like they knew my main chick was number one. The girls in the house, the two girls in the house were like second in line. And there was even like a hierarchy between those two. So basically my main chick, like one of the ones in the house, the other one in the house, then my 14 girl side rotation. And then that had a hierarchy to it too. There was like my top side rotation girls and it, and it tri- you know trickled down from there. But it's too hard to try to balance. And it was too hard on my girl too. Like I'm trying to be less selfish these days. And it was really, really hard on her to, because one of the girls fell in love with me and all this shit. And for her... And then that girl was like trying to create drama between me and my main girl and saying like, oh, he's going to like me better than you or he is like me better, you know, stuff like that. And it just becomes like too many headaches, too much drama. I talked to the Tate brothers about like Tristan. I'm like, I'm in I'm in like a group. Actually, the the four of us in a group chat, me, you and the the Tate brothers, but offline with them, you know, in a different chat, I was telling them like you guys know the special hell that comes along with living with girls with multiple girls like there are some really awesome high highs and big pros to it but there's also some huge cons and some huge fucking negatives and tristan was like yeah i will never do that again he's like i'm never living with another girl again because there's just too much bullshit associated with it there's it's like the real world it's it's like a reality tv show like day-to-day living becomes too problematic because there's drama everywhere there there's gossip there's drama there, there's secrets there's loyalties there's people positioning for yeah i get it i get it let's let's take this question question to both of you if you could both if you could uh go back in time and do a few things different in your life what would it be and what are some of your main goals in the next five ten years so i'll let you answer first i i would have quit drinking a lot sooner I, I think it's important to like my uncle who's given me a lot of profound wisdom in the game he was like a big natural player back in the day He's taught me a lot of lessons regarding boundaries, regarding like not kissing women's ass. Like that's really applied to like, you know, the nines and tens. And it has helped me like get a commanding role with, with those. And he said, you know, like, like since I quit drinking two and a half years ago, like my business went up exponentially. Like my life overall went up exponentially. My fitness, my health, everything went up exponentially. Oh. And he said, you've always had it in you. Like everyone was always telling me like, you're going to fucking crush in life like once because they know when i put my mind to something i can crush it but he's like don't look at your your success since quitting drinking as like your own you know don't don't congratulate yourself too much just look at as a function of what vices you got under control drinking was a huge one sex you know i don't know if by definition i'm a sex addict but i was pretty much banging a lot of my free time for many years like two to five girls a day not all new, but when you're running big rotations, you're, you're banging lots of repeats all the time too. And it's hard to get other shit done. It's hard to be productive. And um, I've, I've toned some of that down somewhat. I still fuck a lot, but, it, but now I'm also being more disciplined. Like I'm doing boxing. I'm doing, I, I was doing Muay Thai before, but now I'm doing like my Muay Thai and boxing. I'm doing, um, we're doing meditation regularly now, you know, just to, to calm the response of the amygdala fear circuit. Yeah. Um, where I, the new company I started is called optimized lifestyle and it's, it's not just dating success, but it's optimizing fitness, it's optimizing health and longevity and all these other things. So I think, I think now I'm like starting to come into my true potential, um, by, by just, you know, getting more control on, on things that were holding me back. And even like another huge one is real quick is we, um, we started like limiting the amount of time we'll like watch TV and shit like that. Cause it's easy to just like, yeah, that's, I haven't watched TV in years. Yeah. They just, no, but not, not like, TV, like we'll watch like Netflix or like movies and like, you know, shit like that. And I told my chick the other day, I'm like, you know, all that's all the times we've watched movies or we watch like different things on Netflix, unless it was educational, none of that really added any value to our lives. And in, in, in a way it's just like turning off your brain oh. and it's much better to like, like when we interact and when, and when we're like, doing things that, that have like a positive upswing for our life. Um, so I'm trying to be more cognizant of, uh, you know, like I've been reading a lot more Nietzsche again lately, because we're, we're trying to replace a lot of these ideologies with Nietzsche's ideology, the black pill, red pill, MGTOW, all this stuff where I'm going to be rolling out like this thing we're calling the gold pill, which is just not <laughs> victim is it? No, it's not, it's not another set of like, Oh, 
people. This is what I think. It's really just as Nietzsche described the Ubermensch, like trying to become the best version of yourself, not being a victim, you know, dealing with the cards that you have been dealt and making the most of it. It's about accepting personal responsibility and being the best version of yourself rather than being defeatist and blaming women or your looks or some other nonsense. And um, Nietzsche said, like, try to make your life such that you'd want to live that day like an infinite number of times. If not, make the changes appropriate so that you would want to live that day an infinite number of times. And that's how you can like improve the, the quality of your life. And also you need to like keep your bigger goals in mind and look at the different things you're doing and how they relate to your bigger goals. And most things we're doing do not, do not help our bigger goals. And that's why people don't accomplish our bigger goals. Wow. Like the, the Tates are always stressing that message. We all have potential to be <clears throat> multimillionaires. Just some people want it more and work harder and make it happen. I would, Whereas, I would sort of disagree with that premise. I think that a lot of people are not capable of being multimillionaires. Like some people are just super dumb. Like honestly, that's kind of what I've noticed. <laughs> and like some people are really bad at like entrepreneurship or management. I think some of us do. Yeah. Kind of my answer to this question is if I could go back in time, the big thing I would go back in time for is not go hiking in the woods that one day where I got Lyme disease. I would definitely love to go back in time for that. Uh, or if I could go back, I would just treat it much sooner so I didn't get to chronic phase. But aside from that, I would go back to college where I was like super self-conscious and awkward. And because uh, I had so many opportunities in college that I missed out on, like I was living in a fraternity house and like I banged what, like two chicks the whole year I was living in that frat house. If I could go back now, it was like so easy. We were having parties at our house. It was like 70 percent hot college girls, like 20, 30 percent dudes. They were at home. Like if I could just go back in time for that, I could just like clean the fuck up. Right. Like and it's just like like you'll never like unless you're a celebrity, you'll never get a ratio as good as you can get in like a college frat party. So I would I would do that. My goals for the next five, 10 years. I definitely want to take playing with fire like really mainstream and just like get like millions of subscribers and followers and make it more and create apps and like create dating apps and just do a lot of shit and grow the business. That's like a big goal of mine. I want to get in really good shape. Um, I think that I want to you know be super healthy, uh, but I want to have like a big business empire. Honestly, that's one of the things I want to do. Okay, question to both of you: What does your typical day look like? It's like all there's like four Brad Smith questions in a row. Yeah, but he's he, yeah, but he's he's had some really good questions. So that's why I'm taking them. Uh, yeah, what what does your typical dude. day look like? How much of a structured plan versus just being spontaneous and winging it? So you want to go first? I, I was actually instrumental in this guy changing his name. That's that he legally changed his name to Brad Smith. Oh, really? Because he was, uh, yeah, he had some, not, not to like fucking put this guy's shit on public, but like he was having some issues with family. And I, I said, like, you don't need to be involved in that. Cause I had, I had some fucking bullshit with my mom growing up and, you know, just being able to like, go on and still live a fulfilling life after all that stuff um but yeah he went and legally changed his name and i think cut some ties with his family all right anyways uh what does your typical day look like um i'm trying to make it more structured to be more effective and optimize this and that um it used to just be kind of all over the place it used to be i would either basically i would i would go out and do night game a lot of the nights and then i would use Tinder and work leads a lot during the day. And I have a lot of dates and rotation girls and everything was centered on game activities. That's why I optimized it to such an extreme. And now I'm, I'm starting, um, like we're looking to start, me and my chick are looking to start like a travel channel on YouTube, basically like a Dan Bilzerian style channel, but more PG. And we're going to grow that aggressively with a, with a YouTube specialist that I met and feed that into the dating channel. And I'm going to start a, YouTube shorts channel. These are a couple of things kind of on the pipeline. Me and my chick are starting a health and longevity company, uh, optimizing that she has cancer a lot in her family. So, and I already know how to stop cancer at all the different levels, but we're going to be driving this into practical, um, you know, basically what I did with dating, but, but for health and longevity and this and that. So, um, yeah. Someone's asking, how's your hair growing back? Anthony, after surgery, what kind of surgery do you do and how much did it cost you? Uh, in Brazil, it was 3,300. The equivalent in the U.S. It's usually around like 10, between like eight to 12 grand or so. Um, it's it's called uh, I don't know the fucking official name actually, but they take like follicle by follicle from from the sides and the back of your hair into the front because I had some receding in the front there. Oh and as you can see, it's still going to be re regrowing for a few more months, but it came in pretty nicely. And so they measure like from the bottom of your face, like to where the natural hairline should be. It's all like 
mathematical, and then they just replaced follicle by follicle. No pain. <clears throat> I was uh, put under, basically, and it took like a full day. And um, they, they told me that if, if they take like less than 30% of the density from the sides and the back, it's not noticeable. It's not perceptible. So they just like strategically, you know, based on their process, take hairs from the side to, to implant in the front, and it's permanent. So I wish I did that a lot sooner, but. Mm -hmm. Someone says, John, how do you follow up on text once you set a second date during the first date? Also, what if a girl changes her mind between the first and second date about meeting again? It's a good question. Um, you just confirm the night before in the morning of, just like you normally would with any date set. If they change their mind, you just answer objections. Mm -hmm. So you just like, if she changes her mind, you're like, what's up or something like you just try to figure out what the objection is. Yep. And it, by the way, I, um, we started a new uh, TikTok actually that we're going to be we're posting on three times a day. Um, it's TikTok slash at John Anthony Lifestyle. You have to write at John Anthony Lifestyle, um, and that's going to be we're we're putting three posts a day on there, three TikToks a day. So make sure you guys follow me on TikTok as well. Okay, yeah, I got it. Okay, let me take some more good questions. What do you think about this? This guy says, I've had many dates, but almost none get to third. Why is it so hard to get a third date? I would assume that he's not closing. So these are girls that he's not banging. So I think what's happening, and this guy can correct me if I'm wrong. I can't pronounce his username, but that basically he's going on a date with one girl. He's not closing, going on a second date, not closing, and the girl's just getting bored and she's not showing up to the third date. That would be my assumption. What do you think? Um, yeah, there could be lots of problems happening. Um, it's also not clear if he's like banging the girl yet by the third date. A lot of guys have like dates leading to nowhere. So they'll go and have the date and then it's like, hey, nice to meet you. Then they'll have another yeah. date. It's just a bunch of boring conversation. There's critical things you need to be doing on a date. You need to be sexualizing so that you're not friend zone. Um, you need to be leading things so that she will come back to your house after. You need to be... Um, banging her and setting proper frames so that it's clear that you guys are going to hang out a bunch more, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So there, there's all kinds of uh, strategic things that need to be done. This That's too too open-ended of a question to properly diagnose. Yeah. Someone said this. We, we addressed this. So we talked about this in the beginning of the stream. We talked about uh, straight to the house dates. So I didn't skip the question. It was just like already addressed. And I didn't want to like repeat, you know, have John repeat himself or me repeat myself because, you know, we did that. Uh, Okay, so someone says this. How do you do takeaways other than if you're shy, I'll understand because I notice anytime I assume a friend, they take it for granted and use it against me. Uh, okay, this is like a two-part question. How do you do takeaways? Uh, I mean, I have a few videos on this, but just it depends. It has to be contextual. So, for example, if you ask a girl a question, you're like, hey, how's your day going? And she doesn't respond. And you say, I generally didn't take you for the flaky type. That makes no sense. That's an incorrect use of a takeaway. <laughs> yeah, like, guys do that all the time. The guys yeah, always so yeah, the takeaway has to be appropriate for the question. So in that situation, if you ask her how her day is going and she doesn't respond, you might wait a few days and you might say, don't think too hard now, right? So it has to be appropriate for the question. So that's the basic premise of a takeaway. Do you have anything to add on that? Um, <clears throat> I think one of the biggest problems is that guys will use these things we teach them as like outer game tactics in a, in a magic bullet sense, like time to go into my tool chest and like use the takeaway like like just like it, it, nothing can come from the frame of um looking to to accomplish like some big effect you know like when when, put, when people are putting out like todd v is a good example <coughs> he's like okay time to do a disqualifier time to um you know all these little like stupid like tactics the frame should be like you're the man you can get hot girls no problem you get hot girls all the time this girl's not a big deal to you and kind of a good like litmus test is just to think of an extreme alpha character and think what would he do he's not gonna he's i talk not gonna about be, my product yeah yeah he, he's not gonna be like doing these you know like saying these little things i don't i don't really do, do too many takeaways to be honest because it, it comes under the gamey frame sometimes I think you actually, my my assessment is that you actually do use takeaways. You just don't call them takeaways. You just think of them as something else. You just think of them as like uh, calling them. Dealing call. with non-compliance. Yeah, yeah. You just, yeah, but it's the same thing. You just, we just, we, you just call it something different, right? 
because I think, uh, you know, you and I both use them. Someone asked this, how do you navigate Brazil being that's dangerous even during the daytime compared to other countries? So that's like question. For not you. my city. The city I'm in is not dangerous at all. What it's about because you were talking other. about uh, we were talking, you said that you might move to a different city. So what about like we'll be like your advice on that? Because you have traveled a lot through South America. Yeah, so. we're, we're thinking about moving to uh, Sao Paulo because of the volume, because there's 25 million people in the metropolitan area. Yeah. So how would you like navigate around Sao Paulo? Just stay in the safe areas. I mean, I have a sports car. I, I wear a fucking Rolex, uh, this and that. You just, I, I've, been, I've lived in plenty of dangerous places. Like in Puerto Rico, I was almost shot three times. Um, I, I wouldn't live in dangerous areas again. Like the city I'm in in Brazil is, is safe. I have a friend uh, from England here that he lived in Sao Paulo for 10 years. He never had even one incident. And he, he basically like, from all his knowledge of Sao Paulo drew like a, an, a map of like the safe zone. And so we would just basically spend most of our time there. But, you know, I have like security systems and like various, um, you know, we, I park in gated area, areas and this and that. So, uh, but I'm not worried. Like the, the city I'm in now is like safer than most U.S. cities. So mm -hmm. Brazil gets a bad rep for safety because of different Real, uh, drug related crimes. And stuff that happens in like the favelas that goes into like the overall country statistic, right? Um, like the favelas being like the really poor neighborhoods and shit like that, like yeah. the kind of like ghetto equivalent in the U.S. Um, or the projects or something like that. But as long as you're not going into those areas and, and not being a fucking retard and stuff like that, um, you're mostly going to be fine. I mean, I, I know like a whole great deal of martial arts too. If I were ever like attacked on the street or something like that, but I, I don't know. I mean there's a lot of uh, myths around like the safety of, of Brazil and um, especially this city I'm in now. It's like, I've never, I've been here uh, over two years now. I've never even heard of like, you don't really hear of crimes happening. Yeah. The one piece of advice I would give, and this is like, I didn't come up with this as like common piece of wisdom for travel in third world countries mm -hmm. is have like 20 or $40 in your wallet. So that if someone comes up with you with a knife and says, yo, give me your money, you have something to give them, but it's not. I was with, I was with you in Bogota and you got held at, at machete yeah. point. Yeah. So, but yeah, so I gave the guy like 30 bucks and that was it. Right. But if I didn't have any money, there was a chance I could have gotten stabbed. And if I had like thousands of dollars in my wallet, I could have lost all that. Right. So you want to have just a little bit of cash, but not too much. Let's take one last, <laughs> let's take one last question. Uh, I have a question. What should you do when you ask a girl when she's free and she says, I will text you when I'm free. Cause <coughs> don't ask. So what, what, what would you do in a situation like that? Like you text a girl, Hey, when are you free? And she's like, I'll let you know. Like, how would you follow up to that? Yeah, people ask this all the time on my mentorship. Um, so, using the using the language uh, tentative, it works very well. Most of my game is like, how do you lower compliance thresholds and be more persuasive when you get objections or non-compliance? And um, basically, if you saying like, what's the day we can tentatively plan for? Um, I say, I usually say, don't worry, I'm busy too. Or, you know, I, I'm not. I'm not like really sure of my schedule either, but what's a day we can tentatively plan for? Then she'll think like, okay, I can maybe do a Wednesday. Okay, let's maybe tentatively Wednesday, but I'm not sure yet. Then you just put a calendar reminder and just firm it up the day before or the morning of. Um, and then uh, <laughs> the amount of like the amount of fucking negativity that it, it just it, let's take a really quick thing. I know you don't give a fuck about these guys. The amount of like like. I want everyone to be fucking crystal clear about something. If we were to put all the dating coaches like on a map, right? Like on a, on a fucking flow chart in like color code, here's people that are giving practical advice. Here's people that are giving you abstract theoretical nonsense. Alex and I are two of the only ones giving you practical advice, tireless, tirelessly, like fucking answering all your questions, which we have much better shit to do, right? Like even this right here, this is not for us. And it's just completely fucking disrespectful and rude for guys to come in and try to fucking troll. This is how it's been for the whole fucking time. This is what drove a lot of the event. And this isn't me like being butthurt or complaining. I don't give a fuck about any of these comments. I could give two shits. You know, I've seen this shit for 10 years. It doesn't bother me whatsoever. However, this is what drove a lot of the advanced guys out of the community is when an advanced guy is giving you advice, you should be fucking respectful and thankful and finding well, that's, out that's, that's, that's never gonna happen bro i mean they, they, you can they, get better results okay? yeah but this, this reaction of trolling them and, and disagreeing with them as if you know better is fucking nonsense they go make your own channel and go fucking 
push your wisdom. We have plenty of shit dating coaches out there. You can be one too. Yeah, so. I, mean, I mean, I agree with you, but like, that's just like the trolls will always be there, like no matter. And the, I think the, the the more your channel grows, the more trolls you'll have. It just comes with the territory, in my opinion. No, I know. It's just it's just fucking it's just rude and disrespectful. And, he, and there's these little fucking keyboard losers behind, you know, wherever the fuck they are. Um, you know, they would never say that kind of shit to my face. All right. I have a question. What? Uh, OK, so use the tentative language. Another thing you can do is like dig into their schedule because they're not going to offer up like a little window of time for you. They're thinking like, okay, I'm working and I'm going to the gym and then I have to go to bed and do some other shit at night. So I'll be like, okay, what time are you normally off work? Six. Okay. Can we meet after work one day? No, I usually go to the gym after I get off work. Oh. Okay. Can you skip the gym one day or, or go to the gym at a different time that day? No, I like to go to the gym after work. Okay. What time are you done with the gym and like showered and everything? Uh, like eight o'clock or eight 30. Okay. Can we meet at eight or eight 30? One of the days. Oh, uh, no, because I usually go to bed at like 10. Well, let's just plan for like 8.30, just for like an hour. We'll get like a quick drink, a quick coffee. Um, what's the day we can tentatively plan for that? Oh, I think Wednesday. Then you firm it up Wednesday. Now you have her, you, she'll probably confirm. Then you have, have her out on Wednesday. And then she'll go past her bedtime just because she's having a good time, right? So you have to like creative problem solve with them. And if it's ever like, oh, I need to check my schedule or... I'll know by this date, then it's just calendar reminder. Okay, so, so a combination of tentatively plus persistence plus creative problem solving in their schedule. Let me just quickly address this. Like sidestep, what question did I sidestep? I don't understand. Like, like what question did John not answer? Like, I mean, like, like I don't understand what I sidestepped. Like, like, can, can this person please clarify what exactly I sidestepped? Like, like John is answering the questions. Like, what question did he not answer that I asked him? Like, these are all game questions. Like, there's not like that's his. Yeah, I don't know what. I, what did he I, ask me for? I, I don't know. Like, what I sidestep. Like, can someone point this uh, out? Alex, you never read my super chat. Yeah, I don't. There's just so many stuff. Like, honestly, unfortunately, like if if I was to go through every question, like we would be here actually forever because we would never we would never finish. So sorry, man. I'm sorry, Mr. Super Chat. Uh, it's just it's just so many questions. Like, we only got through like 10 percent of the total questions uh so yeah i don't know what the super chat was that i missed but uh yeah i mean again like the, the, the thing is is that we had this we have to keep this practical like if we were to answer every single question then this like john would have to basically give up like the next five years of his life because we'd be here forever um uh, so yeah uh, there's not much you know I, we, I try to pick the best questions honestly that's kind of how my thought process is when i'm doing these and it, like, yeah I just try to pick the most interesting questions <laughs> i try to avoid questions that have already been answered multiple times, right? That's kind of how my mindset is with these questions. And in my in my eight week program, like I'll, I'll shout out more time because we're we're gonna wrap up in a second. The platinum dating system dot com. Uh, you're on four hours a week with me personally, and four hours a week with my other coach and my team, and that happens for eight weeks. So you get thirty two total hours with me over eight weeks, thirty two hours with my top coach and my team for eight weeks, and we get you extremely good and optimized usually by like week two or three. So that's how you get a permanent solution. And that's how you, you get me for a long period of time answering all your questions. Like you're saying cap, like what am I capping about? Like, can, can you actually write out the question that I skipped? Like, I want to actually see. This is that's what, what I'm talking about, man. Did I sidestep? Like, I want, like, ask him what he thinks about Myron. Like, that's, we already know what John thinks about Myron. Like, that's, like, how is that new news? Like, John has made so many videos on this. Like, and that, the reason I didn't ask this question is because I already know what the answer is. And John has so many videos on this. So, like, why would I ask him about it again? Like, we're just going to be rehashing old grounds. Like, yeah, yeah. Sure. I could. The one, the one, the one sentence summary is that that the Fresh and Pit po podcast is just a regurgitation of Rolo Tomasi's incorrect opinions. And they've just grown due to Jerry Springer style drama of creating, you know, it's gotten more and more fucking ghetto and trashy as, as the, as the, now there's like fights on the show and stuff. Just like Jerry oh, yeah. Springer. This, this person it's, guys, it's guys that have been outed for faking a million things. It's they're objectively scammers. They're objectively frauds. They're objectively fucking huge beta losers. The end. It doesn't matter who fucking endorses them, and it doesn't matter who fuck how popular they get. Okay, that's that's the end of that comment there. 
Oh, I found out. Oh, this was funny. So he paid. He does super chat. Okay, I know the question is. Yeah, it's a fucking dumb question. That's why I didn't take it. I don't care if you super chat. I was asking how the trans scene is in Brazil and below me because I'm a ton of trend. I want some. Yeah, it's a troll question, so I'm not gonna like take that. I don't care if like the person super chatted. Like, if you want, I'll give you your money back. But I'm not gonna take like super dumb questions like that because one, um, <laughs> I don't know anything about trend because I've never been on trend. Two, I don't like tranny. So like, like this. Is <laughs> so if I skip a dumb question, that's the reason. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, but you avoid my question about difference of compliance. Okay, so let, let's answer this question. Okay, <laughs> I like both of you, but you avoid my question about difference of compliance straight to the house. We're straight to the house. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. Yeah, I, again, this is not like I'm not deliberately skipping your question. It's just like you know, it's not I, a it's not a significant difference. I have multiple videos on my channel about how to how to pull to the girl's house if you live at home or otherwise don't have your own place. And all things considered, it's not anything significant for the compliance required, but. And as common sense would, would show you, and it also the case in practice from the data I've collected, it's a little bit harder to convince the girl to go to her house because then, then you know where she lives and she's inviting a strange man into her space where she can't just leave that space. If she goes to your house and you act weird or creepy, she can just bounce out and you don't know where she lives and bother her and all this stuff. It's also, but you know, she, if she comes over, um, if you go over to her house, now you know where she lives and it's not as easy to get rid of you. So it does require a little more compliance, but not anything significant. I, I have lots of students that absolutely demolish, even though they live at home, even though they live with their wife or whatever else. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think it's a lot easier to do to your house than to do to their house. Um, so, yeah. All right. I think we covered a lot of uh, we covered a lot of interesting topics. So uh, this was good. Uh, OK, so what do you, is there anything you want to shout out or anything you're working on now? Um, I'm going to be doing the, I'm going to be dismantling all 26 of Rolo's major talking points, Rolo Tomasi, and in turn, that's going to eliminate all the, you know, or at least disprove the whole red pill ideology and all the red pill content creators. There's like 30 plus. Um, so that's going to be a lot, that's gonna be a lot of videos. <laughs> that's one thing. Um, we also have ads now on YouTube as people may have seen or will see. And Whereas you're looking to get very mainstream, we are as well. Our targets are to get on Joe Rogan, are to, you know, have collaborations with Dan Bozerian. I'm starting these other channels that I'll be announcing, a travel channel where we we'll be traveling around the world, picking up chicks around the world, documenting that. Um, also starting a YouTube shorts channel. And I'll be back with the daily videos starting Monday morning. So, um, yeah, that's that. A lot more people to be fucking roasting and slamming for being a piece of shit in the space. Um, yeah. Well, oh, this is this is funny. I'm, oh, I'm, it, yeah. It, well, if you it, can you make it like the the view where it like shows us in like the rectangles, so it has like the. Yeah. How do I do that? Just, just click the view where it's like the two long rectangles. What what tab is it under? Brand or banners or where? No, no, it's not on the right. It's like right underneath our faces. It's like, um, like the views for the. Oh, okay. Which one do I? Which one do you want? Like to the do? long, like the long rectangles together, just so it can display. Like this. Oh, it doesn't even display our names. I think because the logos on there. So, um, <laughs> platinumdatingsystem.com. Uh, platinumdatingsystem. We'll just put. We'll just put it in the description. Okay. Yeah, check Let's out the that. description. But, um, platinumdatingsystem.com. Uh, for the eight week program, you can jump on a free 30 minute call book through there. And my channel is John Anthony lifestyle. Yeah, we got one person going crazy in the comments. So let me just quickly address this. This is funny. Playing fly. Are you mad because you got destroyed on your debate with fashion fit? Uh, we're going to ignore all the grammatical errors. Okay. I don't know how anyone could watch that debate and think that I got destroyed. It was literally him just going in circles over and over again, trying to justify. I'll give the guy props for coming on. But like the circle of logic during that debate was insane. I was like, dude, do you think it's wrong that Fresh and Fit does false copyright strikes? He's like, he's, he's like, well, bro, you know, who am I to say that's right or wrong? It's not illegal. I'm like, okay, something can be illegal and still be wrong. He's like, well, you know, who am I to say it's for like the circular logic and the justification and the same thing in that debate was insane. 
And it basically got to the point where it was like three hours in and one of the girls I was meeting up with was outside. So I had to call it. But I don't know how anyone could. Yeah, we're also, we're also like too long guys to have that happen. Like I've, I've been on Collins videos where chicks are arriving and shit like that. Yeah, but I don't know how anyone could watch that debate and thought I got destroyed. At the very, the, the, at best you can say that it was a debate that went nowhere because it was just I, like slow circular logic. I don't, I say, I give you props, man, for fucking wasting your time taking on <laughs> these people. Like to me, like, like, Okay, like if, like if someone calls Kevin Ray Wilder gay, it's like there's no need to debate that person. They're just a moron. If so, if someone thinks that Fresh and Fit has any credibility, despite all the objective facts out there that have been shown endless times, they're just a moron. Like there's no reason to debate these people. Yeah, I, I kind of I kind of get a big kick out of it. Honestly, it's gotten to a point where I've actually been enjoying it. But let's, let's actually end it off on a positive note because there's actually a really good question by Brad. Uh, and I think that's interesting. John, please talk about your experience with being with Liz. Did you ever expect to be in love and has it changed you as a person? I remember you saying that you're a lot less selfish now than before. That's an interesting question. I've been in love multiple times. I, 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 the first time I was in love was like in college. So like, it's not like the first, this isn't like the first time I've been in love. There's this big misconception out there <clears throat> that having a high lay count means that I have like no emotional connection with the girls. I've had emotional connections with the girls the whole way through or that I'm just trying to max out quantity in, in, for the sake of, of sacrificing quality. I kept my quality very, very high. Alex can attest to that. Uh, there's countless other evidence that that, I, that can attest to that. Um, and I usually have a very close relationship. I, I'm not, I've never said like, if the girl doesn't put on the first date, get rid of her. Or, you know, if um, whatever. I, I think I think it's really good to be, there's a lot more you can experience with a girl than just because of sex. I love fucking hot chicks. I love fucking and I, I like banging new chicks. But you can have like a whole bunch of other enriching life experiences with these girls too. So I I've been in love a whole shitload of times before Liz that I've had uh, main rotation girl as a standard over the past decade for more than a decade now. I'm going to do a video on this. I've had a girl that was above a nine as my main girl or as my girlfriend for over a decade in all the different cities I lived in around the world. But but the question is, has it changed you as a person, like your relationship? Like, has it changed you in any way? This specific time being in love with a girl? Yeah. Um, to be fair, yeah. I mean, like she's, she's a very um, good hearted person that's very selfless. And she's usually putting the needs of me before her often to to her emotional or, or mental detriment or whatever but so i'm trying to be a better partner it is it is tough dating a guy like myself with a, a lifestyle like myself and i and i am a fairly selfish person i will admit um so yeah i think i think i am making some she does she does make me be a better person for sure mm, okay. uh, so i i think i think the answer is uh yes and that's not that doesn't mean i'm like going soft or you know stuff like that but it just you know they're being being like super selfish you know has its drawbacks as well um mm -hmm. in any, in any yeah way, i agree with you on that even even in friendships even in familial relationships and that kind of stuff so um i think i think it's important that that people do try to figure out what it is that makes them happy and, and constantly trying to, to be evolving and, and being the best, best version of themselves. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. And that yeah. comes in different shapes and sizes. There isn't like, here's how, let me tell you how to be happy or let me tell you how to yeah. live your life. Yeah. I agree with you on that. Yeah. All right, cool. This, I think this is a dope live stream. We got through a lot of good stuff. Check out John's channel. Um, yeah. So just, uh, okay. So tomorrow we got, I'm doing a debate with turd flinking monkey. I actually don't know nothing about him. Apparently he's like Mook or something. See, there goes. That's my point. It's like, you're like spending time tomorrow. I'm going to be debating turd flinging monkey. Like, it be <laughs> yeah. If you think about it, it does sound like pretty ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be debating turd flinging monkey. <laughs> I wonder how that's going to go. But uh, I actually have been enjoying the debates a lot lately. It's like a fun new angle, I think. Uh, you know, you someone, know. Just someone, get... someone said real quick. Someone said modern life dating is claiming two hundred plus lay count. Yeah, that's definitely not true. Even if it were true, uh, I did two forty six in my best year, so I still beat his lifetime count in one year, or beat Rolo and Hamza's count in one month. Yeah, just to give my viewers an idea, so like. 
what I guess what you have to understand is I've you know I made so many fucking videos and I've answered so many questions so that when I do like a standard live Q and A. 99% of the questions have been asked. I've already answered 10, 20 times. It's, I don't mind doing it. I'll keep doing it. But I kind of like to make things a little interesting and like exciting. So that's why I've been doing the debates recently. It's it's simply because I've already covered a lot of like the standard Q&A stuff like over and over again, right? And I'll still keep doing it. Uh, but I want to I, like my goal with this channel is that every time you turn in for a video, it's something new and interesting. Like I don't want this channel to become repetitive where it's like, here we go. Alex, again, talking about text game. He's already covered this 100 times, right? Kind of like if you like, again, not to keep bringing us back to Fresh and Fit, but the common criticism they get is that if you've seen one of their videos, you've seen them all, right? Because it's the same shit over and over again. I don't want that to be the case with this channel. I want it to be like unique and exciting with every video, every live stream. So that's why I try to keep things interesting. Uh, but I will keep doing the standard content that you guys love. Like that's going to keep happening over and over again. But also I want to add a little spice to it. So that's why I've been doing the debate stuff recently. And we'll see. Maybe in a few weeks I'll get bored of that and I'll move on to a different theme, right? There's going to be a lot of interesting comment. No, dude, I, I, give, I give you credit. I, I, I was endorsing you. you were, you've been the only channel I've ever endorsed besides Bradicus. But Bradicus got wiped off the, the internet. Yeah. Um, and only because he showed tons of proof. And, and, but I give you credit, for, and he made so many infields. I give you credit, though, for <clears throat> um, you, like, you, like, really – Alex really, really cares about helping all you guys. Like, he, like, answers all the fucking forum stuff. Like, just, just the amount of, um, like, concern you have to get guys better without asking for anything in return. Like, his goals – I know from behind the scenes, his goals are not to make money here at all. They're not to fucking do anything other than, like, help more people, which is very – admirable and i appreciate that well thank you i appreciate that man uh but okay yeah so anyway so make sure you guys subscribe to our channel subscribe to john's channel he's got a lot of really good stuff on there uh and thanks everybody for tuning in until next time all right guys